Need fast, cheap, reliable MUD coins? Go to MMOXP.com for the cheapest coins on the market. And use discount code MONEYSHOT for an additional 5% off your next order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got a defensive tip video for you guys today. I'm going to start this off a little bit differently, though, for the people that play Mutt. I'm going to show you guys my Mutt team, and I'm going to show you guys my setup. Uh, because ultimately, these are some advantages that you can have. Now, this entire video is going to be helpful for whatever game mode you play. But I'm going to start off with Mutt because I typically play Mutt, and I would imagine my followers typically do as well. Uh, now, starting off, looking at my defense, I have a pretty good defense here. But the only positions that matter are the safeties, the secondary, the cornerbacks. I don't care about any of my linebackers. I don't care about any of my defensive line uh, no matter what game mode you play when I used to play CFM I wouldn't take a team unless it had a very good secondary that's that's paramount in my opinion so I only really use three different cornerbacks uh, and I use about five different safeties uh, on my defense but like I said the linebackers some of them are just spot holders the defensive tackles they make no difference to me I don't really put too much uh, stock into them that's why they're both nets I think that that's probably the most important thing when it comes to uh, a defense in this game now as far as my superstar abilities and and, uh, my x-factors and all that it's pretty much the same throughout every one of my players has acrobat and mid zone ko i only have them in four players because i typically run a lot of base four three and stuff like that so my two starting safeties and my two starting cornerbacks on the outside all have uh, mid zone ko if you don't know what mid zone ko does you can see right here the second the ball is thrown not the second it's caught but the second it's thrown you can see these guys light up and they react to the ball they react to the where the ball is going you can see on that play right there everybody's lit up on the next play all all of my back defenders, all four, will light up and they will attack the ball the second it's in the air. That's important when it comes to, um, you know, if, if they're throwing deep, especially there. That was short throws, but you'll see more of that as the gameplay goes forward. I also have uh, lockdown maxed out, uh, which is obviously uh, probably the most important cam. Uh, and that's pretty much it. So let's go and let's get right into the gameplay. Now I start off on the offensive side. I'm running the pistol offense, which is something that I don't think I know a lot of people out there that are really running, but it's really about two offensive schemes. So I'll put links in the description for. Uh, the full breakdowns of the offensive schemes and the defensive schemes I'm running if you guys want to keep up because this is mostly going to be a defensive tip video so I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining uh, the offensive side but like I said most of my focus is going to be on the defensive side though we are starting off with the offensive side we have some success on the first play on the second play we try to hit him with some crossers here but he's in a very tight man defense nope. so I see that when I go back to the hull I see is a man cover one and that was one of the reasons I'm running this playbook because I love some of the pistol formations especially out of the pistol bunch TE this play right here the cross drag this play right here is one of my favorite especially when it comes i mean it beats just about any defense but it's especially deadly against man cover one so i motion out uh the the running back you're gonna see this is one of the first plays that i run it's gonna be one of the last plays that i run Break yourself, fool. he could go all the way so on the defensive side, one of the first things, one of the most important things to me is maximizing your personnel. I'm running a 4-3 defense here, and I'm going to maximize it by moving my defensive end into the defensive tackle spot. One, because he's a much higher overall rated player, and two, because I want more speed on the field. Even if he was highly rated, he'd still be faster. Then I'm going to take my edge rushing outside linebacker from here, and I'm going to put in a zone coverage linebacker. So I have three high zone coverage linebackers, and I'm going to put Derek Thomas, my edge rusher, right here at this uh, spot here, which is going to be one of the best places for him because he's a really good pass rusher so i maximize this formation the coverage that i'm going to go with and i'm going to be in pretty much throughout the entire game no matter what formation is going to be the cover four quarters this to me is one of the better defenses to run uh, and that's pretty much it i have a setup for this on the very first play though i switched to a man coverage because i was expecting something else he hits me with double drags this is going to be a big part of his game plan in this offense which isn't necessarily too hard to stop we're just going to go ahead we're going to put some hard flats up because one of the first things you're going to want to do on defense is try to locate the target area that your offensive opponent is essentially targeting through the game uh, he showed on the first play that he's pretty much going to be targeting short uh, if that trend continues I'll continue to hard flat on the nope. next play he hits me with a run play like I said it's a very good defense whether it's stopping the run or stopping the pass on the next play though I do not do that hard flat adjustment and you can see he hits me with the double drags one more time and he gets an easy first down so like I said that's two strikes right there that lets me know that this guy is going to be doing that pretty much uh, consistently so I have to stick up with those hard flats I gotta continue to put those hard flats up because adapting to your opponent is one of the most important things about playing defense 
defense. You can't just do what you want to do. You have to basically uh, tailor your defense to what your opponent is doing. On the next play, once again, I don't do the hard flats. It's going to come back and bite me in the ass. Second and 10, he's very patient. He's going to keep hitting these as long as I'm not doing these hard flats. So he's basically forcing my hand. I want to run it this way, but it doesn't really matter. He's running his offense a certain way. I have to match with hard flats, which you can see him doing on the very next play. And then you can see the results are fairly obvious. He only had one uh, drag there, and I basically take it away. On the next play, one of the most important things is doing your job. Do your assignment. On this particular play, my job is a hook curl. Uh, based off the fact that he's hit me with so many of these uh, you know, flat beaters, these drags, I chase that and I leave the center of the field wide open because I wasn't doing my assignment. You ultimately want to try to set up your defense in a way that you don't have to have too much responsibility. So you can be free to roam, but on that play, I didn't do that. Then on the next play, he just runs it right up the gut and scores on me, which is fine. At the end of the day, the first drive is about learning tendencies anyway. You're not always going to pitch a shutout, but you do want to write the book on your opponent as quick as possible. And usually the first drive is about as much as it takes. On this next drive, I'm not doing too great. I'm already in the third and 11. Uh, and on the first offensive series, I mean, I try to step up and run with Rich Gannon. He gets a sack fumble, and he's got the ball right in the red zone once again. So now I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to run a lot of nickel 3 through 5 which is typically my base defense. This is probably a little bit better of a pass defense. I want a little bit more speed on the field. This is like I was saying. I have three safeties at my linebacker spots, which makes it a little bit easier to stop pass plays. And if you pinch the defensive line, that's all you really have to do, and it'll stop a lot of inside zones, which is essentially what my opponent's been running a lot. He's running a lot of inside zones. So I'm still just continuously trying to adapt to his offense, and sure enough, we're, we're finding ourselves having more success on the next play I forget to do the hard flats once again once you learn what your opponent's doing it's all about fundamentals at that point you have to set that up every single time and on this next play once again I don't set up the hard flats he gets an easy catch and run and he almost gets the first on third and one third and two I'm going to switch from my base defense which is what I was running to my situational defense you should always have situational defenses in your back pocket if I expect my opponent to run or pass on third and two I have a perfect setup for that out of my three four this is going to be the best uh, defense that gives me the best chance uh, to stop him in this critical situation and sure enough on the first play he's running the exact same cross double drags and we shut it down probably should have had an interception on the very next play he's coming out in a very similar offensive look which you've been running pretty much the entire game you always want to try to watch for tells lots of motion usually means that they're setting up a pass play i mean some people do fake motions and fake uh you know audibles and stuff like that but most people don't so you can typically uh suggest that that means it's a pass play gotcha, we get an interception on the very next play because of it so we were in a bad spot off of that fumble but we basically erased that back on the offensive side things aren't necessarily going too good I mean, we're using a new playbook. I'm, I'm still kind of experimenting with a lot of these plays. Now, I haven't really used the pistol playbook all year, but using the Niners playbook. So a lot of this stuff I'm really figuring out on the fly, and it's not really going too good. But I am loving this playbook, so expect more out of it. On the next play, I definitely should have had that. What? I don't know, EA's been doing that a lot to me lately, so we had to punt the ball away back on the defensive side. This is a defensive video anyway. Next play, once again, still hit me with the double drags. Would have got a stop, but I tried a hit stick, and you know what? Safe tackling, I do that 99% of the time. Safe tackling is very important, or just running into the offensive player a lot of times will trigger a tackle animation, which I also do quite a bit. So make sure that you're doing that as much as possible. On the next play, we're setting up with the hard flats one more time. We think a guy's offense pretty much pegged, and then he hits me with an adjustment where the running back's coming out on a wheel route. So you have to watch for adjustments the second your opponent adjusts to the defense that you're setting up to stop their offense you have to be aware of that and you have to basically make new adjustments this game is essentially trying to solve a moving puzzle that's constantly changing its pieces on the next play you always have to watch for tells and react my opponent here flips the play i guess he's trying to hit me with a run play so i go ahead and i i flip uh my defense i basically shift it to the side where it's most likely that he could do a inside zone then based off of my shift he flips it right back so that's you know that's the chess match you're always looking for uh an advantage and you always have to be watching Watching what your opponent's doing on the offensive side pre-snap. It doesn't necessarily always work out like it did in here, but it'll give you a higher chance of success. On the next play, I pinched my defense because it is second and in inches and he did just run. But at the end of the day, the more critical situation right now is the clock. He's only got 30 seconds left and two timeouts. So I'm going to play uh, you know, more for uh, the, the pass. So I'm going to spread my defense because when you spread your defense, you get a better pass rush. The defensive ends have a better opportunity of getting off the edges. Once again, it does not work out here, uh, but at the end of the day, I still get myself a better opportunity and on the next play dots me up but it is what it is so 24 seconds left i'm going to change my defense when something's not working out you got to switch it up so i'm going to go with the cover three cloud uh which is very successful defense i'm going to do the exact same setup so he thinks it's the same play on the 
next play, you're going to see he rolls out. He doesn't necessarily know what he's looking at. He's not doing the same reads. Uh, it doesn't work out once again as he hits me short one more time. But you can see, I mean, at the very least, I got him to hesitate. Then on the very next play, we're going to switch it up one more time. We're going to send some heat. We're going to mix up the timing. He's too comfortable back there. He's holding the ball too long. So we're going to send the house. This is a little bit of a defense that I put together that I'm still trying to perfect, uh, where essentially I'm just blitzing all. Watch out, watch out, watch out, watch out. And he gets dunked in the backfield. So we do get the stop there. We do hold him to a field goal, which obviously is huge. So we're only down three going into the second half. Second half, though, he's got ball. I'm going to run that same blitz because there's always a chance that he's one of these players who just can't handle the pressure. So I'm going to send the full heat at him one more time. Sure enough, though, he hits me with a run play, which is a great counter. You never want to blitz the run. You can see how because of that, there was nobody behind the blitzers. And essentially, he gets a very big run. So that's why I run a lot of cover four quarters. This is an excellent run defense. Uh, once again, like I said, I just put this defense out. Link in the description below if you guys want to check this out. To me, it's one of the best run defenses. One of the best ways to run your defense in the game. And you can see we get a stop. A completely night and day uh, difference there. But he's still having a lot of success throwing the ball on me. So on the next play, he hits me with the uh, the drag once again. I got to switch it up a little bit more. Obviously, there's a there's an issue here. I'm not. Uh, I don't have enough defenders. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to take one of these safeties because he's not threatening me deep. And I'm going to use the safety in that capacity. And now you can see nothing's open as we all almost get nope. interception we get the uh the, the, the knockdown animation uh instead of the catch animation on second and ten we're using that safety one more time nothing's open one more time so we basically nope. switched it up now he's got to solve my puzzle now he can't figure out what i'm doing then on third down we go with that three through five cover through cloud one more time like i said this is a great turnover defense third and 13 this is going to have nothing but success and he's going to hold the ball and essentially take the sack Oops. and a penalty so we're going to hit him with a, a couple of run plays which is the reason that i'm running this offense in the first place is the run play. What? What? we're going to get a very big play don't know why i didn't have quite enough speed to get going but it definitely set us up uh with a really good position uh, to try to get a field goal here on the next play we hold the ball a little bit too long and we take the sack so we're going to take the points tie up the ball game which is definitely the uh the smartest thing to do uh so it's 10 10 and we're almost in the fourth so it's really getting down to crunch time like i said defense has got to be on point got the full setup in i think i got the puzzle solved i got my hard flats i got the defense pinched uh sure enough on the next nope. play he's hitting me with that inside zone like i said this is going to stuff all of that i know what my defense can and can't do which is one of the most important things you really have to know what your defense is capable of on the next play second and nine got those drags once again nope. got those hard flats once again so his offense i pretty much solved the puzzle then on third and seven we're bringing that safety down now this is a very touchy situation because i need to know i still have to follow my assignment i still have to do my job which really in this position we can only be in trouble if that tight end goes on a streak if that tight end streaks i gotta follow him otherwise i'm free to roam and sure enough he goes on that streak so i gotta follow him and because of that he basically finds another opening which to me was just all about the animation i don't think he should have even caught that but you have to make pre-snap reads on defense i mean that's just as important as making them on offense you have to know what's threatening the area that you're supposed to cover and if you do that you're going to have a better chance of covering it successfully but you also want to try to set up your defense so that you have as little responsibility on the play as possible you want to free roam as much as possible so on this play i put a three wreck in the center of the field i got my hook curl in the center of the field or my hook zone rather in the center of the field so that hopefully i can run around as much as i want which is also typically why i use the middle linebacker not the safety because you can see i get pulled back by a streak once again and he gets enough time to throw it underneath if i was on the linebacker i would have been there so i typically use the linebacker i'm going to try to get back to that position but based off the fact that we've been having success using the safety we're going to keep doing it on this play my pre-snap read is all the receivers are on the left so he's going to probably try to hit me with crossers so i gotta watch that i gotta watch for those oncoming receivers sure enough that's exactly what happens i take those away he tries to throw it underneath and boom we got an interception so we're going to take that the other way he cut go all the swagging, I'm swagging, I'm swagging away. And I'm thinking the game's over because, you know, he hasn't moved the ball that well against my defense, at least not to the point where he scored a lot of points. He's only scored 10 so far. So I make a mistake here. I don't play the situation. I'm coming out, still using that safety, almost like uh, I expect him to essentially keep doing the drags, keep doing the same offense he's been doing, where now he's really got to push the ball. So sure enough, I'm out of position on this next play. Uh, I, you know, I basically should have just been playing the straight cover four, the normal cover four, and he goes right down the field on one play. So fundamentals is a key. You can see once again situational football very important uh and now he's already threatening he's already in the red zone after just two plays so on the next play uh, i mean i follow the play i go back to that exact same defense i was doing that was having success it looks like we got both these guys locked down but this safety for whatever reason just doesn't cover his area and lets this dude get a touchdown in the back corner of the end zone what the fuck 
So, good play by my opponent. We're on the offensive side, though. We have an opportunity here with about 30 seconds left to try to win this ball game. Uh, we're going to set up the same type of crossers play we've been doing all game. We motion this guy out, and sure enough, the safety drops, exposing that he's in a cover three. Get locked. Break yourself, fool! <laughs> he could go all the way. But on the other side, I want to give him the ball back with three timeouts. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to give him these knees three times, and he knows it's coming. So he's just going to head for the exits. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more gameplays like this, do me a favor. Hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.